I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, and I once had a young woman as a patient on this table wake up so aggressively after anesthesia was over that it took three men to hold her down, to prevent her from pulling her breathing tube out, to prevent her from scratching her own face and from hitting others. I had to give whopping doses of propofol and dexmedetomidine or Presidex just to calm her down so that she could wake up normally and peacefully and not harm herself or others. The whole operating room staff was shocked that a young woman could wake up so belligerently and overpower so many other people while still in the depths of her subconscious. We call this emergence delirium, when a patient is waking up from anesthesia not fully conscious and acting very, very hostile to themselves or to others. The common causes are things like a history of substance use, PTSD, medical trauma, inadequately treated pain or even a history of chronic pain, none of which this young woman had in her medical history, at least what she told me. Once she was in recovery, I sat down and spoke with her for a long time to figure out what may have caused this so that we can prevent it from happening in the future for her safety and the safety of others. The wild thing was that she didn't remember any of the hostility. But after doing a lot of investigative questioning, she finally admitted to using surreptitious testosterone injections for athletic enhancement. After she finally told me this, I did a hormone-focused evaluation, looking at her arms and legs, looking at the muscle content, the hair, any changes in her voice, and any mood-related changes such as depression or anxiety. Could testosterone use have led to her behavior here in the operating room? Why didn't she tell me about her testosterone use? And would you have told your doctor if you were using tea before surgery? I'll share with you what more and more patients are telling me about their hormone use and how it might show up before surgery or before mental health treatments like IV ketamine. What they've told me has shocked me because of the stigma that they feel healthcare providers have towards hormone replacement, which can have serious consequences, whether leading to low testosterone or high testosterone. So let's talk about the science of what testosterone does to our brains in both women and men, and how tea affects us subconsciously, whether it's fatigue, a lack of sense of well-being, depression, or anxiety. And if it was responsible for my patient coming out of anesthesia back there so aggressively. We call testosterone food for your brain because it's such an important hormone in your body in both women and men from before you're ever even born. Testosterone influences so much anatomical development while we're still in the womb and while we're adolescents and adults has a significant impact on our psychological well-being. Testosterone and its precursor steroids travel all over your body to reach your brain where it controls fertility, cognition, sexuality, and stress responses. It's active in many parts of your brain, including the amygdala, hippocampus, and the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis. Try saying that one really fast. It has many actions in these brain regions, including dampening the stress response in both women and men by reducing the release of stress hormones like noradrenaline. Testosterone also appears to reduce inflammation, which can play a large role in many mood disorders such as depression and anxiety. And as a sex steroid, testosterone can also act as a neurosteroid, meaning that it can promote new nerve connections in our brains, in addition to modulating levels of a neurotransmitter called GABA, which may have a large role in anxiety in many patients. So it's not surprising that levels of testosterone or the balance of testosterone, more importantly, can have significant physical and psychological consequences in our mind and bodies. Let's start with women, because most women have no idea that testosterone and its related sex steroids are the most abundant sex steroids in their body. You heard that correctly. Androgens are far more abundant than estrogens in women. And because many women and their healthcare providers don't realize this, they may fail to appreciate the importance of testosterone balance when evaluating a woman's mental health, especially in those women struggling with mood disorders. 
For example, in women who have surgical removal of their ovaries, what we call surgical menopause, the subsequent mood disorders resulting from the fall in many sex steroid productions can be reversed with testosterone supplementation. Another fascinating study looked at the fear response in women in response to particular triggers and found that a single dose of testosterone could dampen that exuberant fear response. And multiple studies have demonstrated that balanced testosterone levels can promote positive mood and an overall sense of well-being in women. And it's not just depressed moods that can be influenced by testosterone, but anxiety as well. So testosterone sounds like a magic hormone given all of these findings, but the catch is that it's not about too much testosterone, it's about the right balance of testosterone. This powerful hormone needs to be balanced with all the other hormones in your body and specifically in your brain. In fact, too much testosterone can be harmful to mood disorders and even cause depression in some patients. Other risks include elevated levels of testosterone in pregnant women whose children might be at a higher risk of developing autism later in life. And similar risks have also been observed for borderline personality. And in younger folks, testosterone appears to impair certain brain connectivity patterns that may increase the risk of alcohol use disorders. Artificially increasing testosterone out of its normal balance, such as with high doses of synthetic testosterones, can lead to worsening behavioral patterns. And other serious side effects, like increased aggression or angry emotions. And at superphysiological levels, testosterone can also have masculinizing effects on the body as well. But what's so curious about testosterone is that not all studies show the same effects consistently, whether psychological, like for mood, or physical. And this shows that our subconscious is influenced by so many factors. Sex steroids are just one of many. So it's not that more tea is better, but that balanced tea, balanced with fight-flight hormones like adrenaline and mood hormones like serotonin can provide a healthy substrate for us. Before we talk about men, let me know in the comments below what your experience talking about hormones has been with your doctor. And please share what you've learned about hormone health with your loved ones. And you can always visit my clinic's website, Claris Health, to learn more about holistic mental health treatments and how to best advocate for yourself to get the best possible care that you deserve. The link is below. The story of low testosterone in men is quite similar to women. Historically, we learned how testosterone affects the male brain by studying patients with hypogonadism, typically patients with impaired testosterone production by their testes. Unsurprisingly, men with hypogonadism tend to have higher prevalence of depression and anxiety. And so do men who have been chemically castrated for prostate cancer, meaning they've been purposely given medications to reduce the levels of testosterone and its metabolites to reduce the occurrence and growth of prostate cancer. And the same is seen in men with HIV, whose testosterone levels also decrease. And the mood conditions of many of these men can improve with appropriate rebalancing of testosterone. In men in particular, low testosterone can not only cause sexual dysfunction, such as delayed ejaculation or erectile dysfunction, but can also lead to various psychological impairments, such as decreased mood, energy, or concentration. So what did testosterone do to my female patient here on the operating room table? You can see that balanced testosterone is healthy and necessary for women and men, but out of balanced testosterone levels can have wide ranging physiological and psychological consequences. To understand what happened to my patient back there though, we need to first bust some myths around hormone rebalancing in women. Some of these myths include worsening liver or heart disease in women receiving testosterone therapy, which appears to only be true for oral synthetic testosterones, not the intramuscular type that she was injecting. Hair loss is another common myth with testosterone rebalancing, and that's more common in folks who are having testosterone supplementation with concomitant thyroid problems or iron deficiency. Vocal cord changes, like leading to a deeper voice, have been observed in rats somewhat, but not really in humans. And the masculinization side effects of testosterone that I was looking for in my patient originally tend to not 
appear in rebalanced testosterone, but are much more common in superphysiological or excessively high doses of TRT or testosterone replacement therapy. But what about aggression and combativeness? Surprisingly, balanced testosterone in both women and men does not lead to excess aggression or combativeness. It's so much more an urban myth that testosterone therapy leads to really aggro men and women. It's not actually seen in real medicine. However, there is one notable exception, and that's in transgender men. Some studies have shown increased aggression with testosterone therapy in this specific population. These behavioral changes appear temporary, occurring within the first year of starting therapy, but we don't know for sure how long they last in those folks. Unfortunately for my patient, she was not receiving her testosterone therapy from a doctor. No one was following her blood levels, and we don't know what her count was when she was on the table so combative and kicking and hitting other people. At these superphysiological levels or these out of balanced concentrations, testosterone can absolutely have these harmful consequences and may well have led to my patient's outcome there on the table. And it's such a shame that this happens because these experiences give such a bad reputation to normal and natural balancing of our sex hormone. The health of many men and women stands to benefit from hormone rebalancing supervised by a doctor, like what I evaluate in my patients for their comprehensive mental health. So if you or a loved one is struggling with fatigue, depression, or an overall lack of well-being, it's important for you to discuss this with your doctor and address your hormone health to see if there's not a root cause explaining your symptoms. Patients deserve to have their holistic health evaluated instead of just throwing medications and antidepressants and hoping that one of them sticks and one of them helps someone feel better. So if you or a loved one has ever just been given a pill with fingers crossed that it'll help you feel better, let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious if the rest of your health was evaluated, whether your labs were checked, your hormones were checked, maybe your genetics were checked, to see if there's not a physiological cause or contributor to how you're feeling. Of course, our mood has many, many variables that ultimately influence how we view ourselves and how we feel. And hormones can be a powerful contributor and it's one that you deserve to have checked by your doctor.